Margarita Peggy Schuyler Van Rensselaer, who preferred to be called simply Peggy. Her original nickname was Maggie, but slowly morphed it into Peggy over time. Born September 19, 1758, Albany, New York. She was the third daughter of Continental Army General Philip Schuyler and Catherine Van Rensselaer, and sister of Angelica Schuyler Church, Philip Jeremiah Schuyler, and Elizabeth Schuyler Hamilton, her brother-in-laws being John Baker Church and Alexander Hamilton, the first secretary of the Treasury and war hero. Peggy was a talker to town in her younger days, being a very outspoken lady. Her family was a part of the wealthy Dutch landowners in Albany in the mid-1600s, continuing through the 17 and 1800s. Peggy had a comfortable childhood. Her basic education and domestic training were taught by her mother. The Schuyler's family attended the Dutch Reformed Church in Albany, just like other Dutch families of that era. The church is still in service today, but the original building was demolished in 1806. It is quite possible that the language spoken regularly in their household was Dutch, though we cannot be sure. In 1781, a group of Tories and Native Americans forced their way into the Schuyler household, which was located in Albany at the time. But they were searching for Philip Schuyler, whom they intended to make a prisoner of war. Family members, including Elizabeth and Angelica, who were both pregnant at the time, ran upstairs to hide. Soon realizing they left a newborn baby sister, Catherine, who lived until 1857, downstairs. Peggy ran downstairs, telling the intruders that their father had gone to war in the town. Fearing capture, they fled, but one of the intruders threw a tomahawk at Peggy, who was running upstairs with the newborn. The tomahawk left a cut in the banister, which the family left as a memento. None of that can be confirmed, though, as there is no record of this in any letter regarding this event and may be likely be a legend or a story someone made up. I personally believe it In 1883, true, Peggy married Stephen Van Rensselaer III, who was only 19 at the time, Peggy being 25. Knowing Peggy's father would not approve of her marrying a 19-year-old, the couple decided to elope. Stephen was the oldest child of Stephen Van Rensselaer II, the ninth patron of Rensselaer Swick, and Catherine Livingston, a sign of the Declaration of Independence. Rensselaer Swick was a huge estate covering parts of several countries near Albany. When Stephen turned 21, he was entitled to assume responsibility as a lord of the Van Rensselaer Manor. In 1789, having been married for six years, they had three children. Sadly, only one out of the three children survived to adulthood. His name was Stephen Van Rensselaer IV, who lived through 1789 to 1868. Peggy was diagnosed with a deadly disease in 1799, her condition worsening over the course of a few years. Margarita died on March 14, 1801. Only eight months before her nephew, Philip Hamilton, died in November of that year in a duel with one George Eaker. Her brother-in-law, Alexander Hamilton, had been in Albany at the end of Margarita's life and was there when she died. Hamilton keeping her company and giving comfort in her final hours. After she died, Hamilton sent a letter to Elizabeth, one of Peggy's sisters, stating, On Saturday, my dear Eliza, your sister took leave of her sufferings and friends. I trust to find reproach and happiness in a better country. Margarita was buried in a family plot at the Van Rensselaer estate, later being transferred to Albany Rural Cemetery. While not much is known about this woman, it does not make Margarita any less admirable. In fact, I believe it makes her even more amazing. She went through so much after she turned 20, including outliving one of her children, yet she fought anything and everything that tried to stop her up until her final breath. Everyone deserves to have their story told, even someone less known. We have to help stop her story from fading away because no one deserves to be forgotten.